The Mystic Crew of Comus. Have you ever heard of it? If you live outside of New Orleans, then I doubt it. But if you are like most people, when you think of New Orleans, there's a good chance you may think of Mardi Gras. Shimmering beads in the air, paper mache sculptures of Greek gods, jester costumes, and parties of faux southern royalty. These are just a few of the iconic images of the Carnival Festival that now symbolize life in the city. And these are just a few of the lasting impacts of the Mystic Crew of Comus, for it is them that authored the festival as we know it today. But their influence goes beyond aesthetic. This is a controversial and influential secret society in New Orleans. And with the help of some notable corporations, they have come to defend and display white supremacy in the most absurd, ridiculous, and flamboyant of ways. The Mystic Crew of Comus was founded in 1856 in New Orleans around the idea of maturing the then unorganized and wild Mardi Gras festival. They wanted it to be sophisticated like European high society, yet whimsical like old world mysticism. They named themselves after Comus, the Greek god of festivity and revelry, and they structured themselves after other southern fraternities of the time by taking inspiration from European royalty so a member could feel like a king for a day. They became the original crew, which is a group of people that pay for memberships to ride in the parades and attend their functions. For over 150 years, the crew hosted massive parades in which participants displayed faux wealth on floats lit by torch-bearing men, followed by marching bands to bring the whole scene alive, and concluded in the night with an exclusive lavish ball in which the men would market their daughters in ostentatious gowns. While the men schmooze and sequence in bedazzled technicolor costumes while concealing their faces in often disturbing masks that resemble a skinned face. Politicians, business moguls, and powerful shakers would come to join the crew to elevate their own status and to contribute to the celebration of Chauve Tide in New Orleans. This would come to set the standard for Mardi Gras celebrations and not much has changed in the past 150 years and this is a beautiful thing. But unfortunately, with so many things in the South, this rejection to change reinforces an unnecessary and contemptuous pride in its white male superiority. In 1982, the city of New Orleans passed a regulation that if a crew was going to have a public parade, then they will need to not discriminate on race, color, sex, sexual orientation, national origin, ancestry, age, physical condition, or disability. Not a hard benchmark to reach, since all that was required was to provide an affidavit stating that your crew followed no written or unwritten discriminatory practices. Most crews accepted, but only one of the big four, the crew of Rex. The other big three held strong to their exclusive white heritage and lost the parades amongst outcry that this governmental overreach of inclusive regulation would ruin Mardi Gras forever. Well, well, it didn't. It only made the celebration stronger and more diverse and grew to spawn an explosion of parades for everything to dogs, to miniature toy parades, to sci-fi celebrations of all things intergalactic. But of the big three that rejected the ruling, the crew of Podia switched positions a few years later, while a crew of Momus nearly dissolved and has since renamed if the clan of Comus remains to this day rejecting people of color or gender on grounds that they want to retain their anonymity. Although, they release the names and photos of the anointed queens and pages and their parents every year to the press, but still, they reject progression on terms of secrecy. After the ruling in 1992, they may have lost the parade, but not their status. The crew still exists with their large televised grand ball that they throw every year at the very center of New Orleans at the climax of Mardi Gras. Every year, the city rolls out a literal red carpet, a massive one, across Canal Street in the heart of the city. White supremacists dressed as old world royalty trotting out over a red carpet is an obvious metaphor. Much like the now removed statue of Confederate leader Robert E. Lee on a 60 foot pedestal, this symbolism states to the world that New Orleans glorifies and celebrates those that fought and continue to fight against equal rights at the expense of devaluing people of color. On Fat Tuesday, Members of Comus come out of the Marriott New Orleans and cross this red carpet to invite the king of the crew of Rex to come over and attend the Comus Ball in an event called the Meeting of the Courts, said to be a symbol of camaraderie between the crews, a symbol of overt conservative racism still being accepted by more liberal people of power, something that is essential to white supremacy in America. The members of these crews are powerful people. Although Comus members hide their identity, their counterpart, Rex, displays theirs. The former mayor, police superintendent, and even high-ranking military are all members of Rex in recent years. It would be naive to believe that such influential people, past and present, don't also take part in Comus and attend their balls, profiting off of nepotism and cronyism, passing down this confederate dogma that it was founded on, and furthering the separation gap between wealthy and poor and white and black. The 1992 regulation was said to be more about economic opportunities than it was about participation. These parties 
The Comus and Rex balls are held free of charge at the Marriott and Sheraton New Orleans. Free of charge because these hotels believe they profit off of the glamorous display of the televised event, which officially concludes the entire six week long Mardi Gras festival in New Orleans. It's a big deal. I know this event well because I worked this event last year. As my coworkers, mostly of color, we're told by my boss at the hotel that we needed to disregard our pride and discomfort and ignore the fact that we were to cater to such racist individuals and to just be happy to make our money. I'm not saying that such a racially controversial organization cannot exist in America, and I'm not saying that they can't have a party. I just believe New Orleans is better than this now. They shouldn't honor and glorify a discriminatory group as they aggrandize themselves on the streets and airwaves. The people in the city don't deserve to be forced to honor a group that uses metaphors to state to the world that they will never be considered equal. I commend the city for doing its part in 1992 to make Mardi Gras a festival for everyone. But if all the great crews that exist in the city now, they shouldn't give this one the honor of concluding the entire festival. As for the Marriott, they should be held accountable for hosting this group's annual grand ball at their property on Mardi Gras Day. They need to acknowledge that many of their very employees of color are made uncomfortable by having to serve such a blatantly racist organization. I am well aware that this will only change if people refuse to contribute to businesses that profit off of this kind of bigotry. If you plan on going to Mardi Gras or to New Orleans this year, reject staying at these hotels. If you are not, reject these hotels anywhere that you may travel. If you live in New Orleans, protest outside this hotel on Mardi Gras day as they cross that red carpet. New Orleans is a city of often divided color, divided by income, education level, and opportunities, but is also a city that blends the lines that divide the racial gaps. The black community here is one of bold expression that has come to immeasurably influence music, cuisine, dance, and American culture, and their influence reaches far beyond the muddy waters of the Mississippi and has made an impact that will last longer than even the city itself. They even have their own black crews, like Zulu, who have come to embrace white people among their ranks even before the law told them that they had to. They don't deserve such a blatant disrespect just so that a select few self-righteous bigots can throw a masturbatory display of their own privilege and wealth. The Mystic Crew of Comus can be accredited for elevating one of America's most notable events with an artistic direction that has inspired generations of people in the city. But New Orleans is progressing. These men need to progress with the times and outgrow their staunch racist heritage of their past. Or, like the Confederate statues of last year, they should be pulled down from the long-standing public pedestals that they erected for themselves. Uh -huh.